the latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Thanks for being here. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Mark Aflalo. Stephen, recently in the news, there was a lot of chatter about Microsoft and Humanware, whereby it appeared that the two companies were working together to increase compatibility of Humanware's Braille keyboards across the entire Surface lineup. That's right. And, you know, there was a lot of confusion, I think, because no one really knew if they were referring to the compatibility in Windows, the operating system, Windows devices like those manufactured by partner companies like Dell or Acer, or if it was perhaps all about Microsoft's own Surface lineup. Well, Stephen, our goal this week is to actually dispel all the myths here and get down to the bottom of it, and more importantly, figure out what it all means for actual users at the end of the day, because there's a lot of humanware devices out there, and really, at the end of the day, this can only be good news, but we need some clarity to, to really, really get to the bottom of this. Absolutely, and that is exactly what we're here to do today, and we're going to have some great guests with us to uh, to make this all a little bit clearer, I hope. Stephen, you know, uh, humanware devices, uh, you've had a lot of them over, over your lifetime. What has your experience been, and more specifically, what has the experience been using them in Windows? Well, it's an interesting question because, you know, a lot of people might just assume that humanware is all about Braille, but it's more than that. I mean, it's a company for low vision people as well, and there are lots of products. Of course, the Victor Reader Stream is probably the most popular product. It's one of their lowest cost products, and it's a fantastic device that helps people, you know, to be able to access audiobooks, to be able to take notes and lectures, or just to record notes for themselves, or, you know, listen to internet radio or podcasts. So there's that kind of device. They also do lots and lots of low vision magnification devices as well. For me, it was the Connect 12, which is in quotes portable, uh, although it is desktop really. Uh, it's a 12 inch tablet, uh, which has a pad below that you put documents on and you can read them uh, very clearly using the uh, Connect 12 tablet. Uh, I also used for many years a Prodigy 20. It's now defunct, but it was a CCTV desktop magnifier which was a really interesting piece of kit, uh, which you know essentially allowed me to sit up close at a 20-inch monitor and be able to read documents. Now, interestingly, I could change the documents. So say, for example, it was a letter, black text on a white background, as most letters are. Uh, I could invert that. I could have my white text on a black background or a yellow background and black text, and I could just make the contrast suit me. So really interesting. Braille is where they are known for today. And there are many devices, for me it was the Braille Note that really kicked it all off because that was the first QWERTY display which had the QWERTY keyboard on it as well as the 40 cell display. Now of course that's overtaken by the Mantis Q40 and there are many other note takers as well. But certainly when it comes to Windows, uh, you know, I can't speak too much for Mac but I know for Windows, humanware uh, certainly is the product that many people associate with great Braille experiences, alongside, of course, the competitors over there at uh, Vespero who create the Focus Braille displays. Could, you know, for the, for the audience members that might not even know what a Braille display is, can you kind of break it down for people to, uh, what am I getting in a product here? Okay, so think about, you know, you, you know what a, a page of Braille might look like, okay? So you think about a page of Braille where you've got many, many lines of Braille. Well, let's take one line of that and imagine that on a display which can actually change as you move your fingers across. So as you move your fingers across from left to right, you can then press a button on that Braille display to move up to the next line. So instead of having a full page in front of you, you have a single line, but you can read many, many lines. And that's why, of course, they are so good for reading books, because you can fit huge amounts of books onto an SD card, which then goes into your Braille display, and you can read line by line, you know, all of War and Peace and back <laughs> if you want. You know, uh, I think of modern day smartphones and other than the fact that they can't, you know, make the screen pop out and give you actual tactile feedback... Do you find that smartphones have cannibalized Braille displays a bit because of just the, sh the sheer functionality? Functionality, but also simplicity, right? Because one of the great things about a Braille display is that it can give you the access to the text that you would read on screen, but also for, say, someone using a screen reader, hear from the screen. 
but that information on a smartphone is often a bit less because let's take, for example, messages. If you and I are messaging each other back and forward, it's quite simple for me to be able to read a line of your text and then reply to it using the keyboard. Much easier, arguably, than trying to do it with the on-screen keyboard. But there's another factor here that a lot of people forget about, and that is the silence involved in reading Braille. If you've ever read something, you've ever sat down to read a magazine or a newspaper or a book or whatever it is, you'll know about the joy of the silence that comes with it. You'd never get silence when you've got a screen reader because it's always yapping away at you, you've got a voice in your ear, and it can be challenging. So, you know, Braille allows you to have that silent reading experience. Wow, you know what, that's a very good point. Sometimes I wish I had voices that were not in my head, and they are sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. I know, not just the screen readers, right? Uh, Stephen, let's take a quick break because we want to dig into this a little bit more this week. We've got someone from Humanware standing by and also someone from Microsoft. So hopefully the answers are just moments away. This is Double Tap TV. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. We're back, and with us this week, Stephen, is Andrew Flatteres, a product manager at Humanware. Indeed, Mark. Now, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us this week. We're glad you could come on and help dispel some of these myths around this recent announcement. So let's dive right into that first question that everyone is asking. First off, maybe you could explain to us how Designed for Surface actually came about, and what does it even mean? Sure. So the Design for Surface team were looking for assistive technology products that would really um, expand their product portfolio to allow um, to allow anyone that really needs assistive technology to expand their own ecosystem to have products that are catered for or tested fully with their own products. Um, so all of the Surface products that are available, and there's, there's quite a few of them, um, the idea is that they'll test your technologies against their own technologies. So the Braille displays that we have on the program, so this is the Mantis Q4D, the BI40X and the BI20X, we had to go through various different testing stages to get it approved. And so what it actually kind of means is that it's, it, you know, it's recognized as an inclusive technology in their design for surface program. Uh, that's kind of what it is <laughs> in a nutshell, really. Um, it just allows a better experience for someone who has a design for surface device uh, to choose a humanware Braille display. Andrew, I, we need to be absolutely clear here because there's a lot of confusion. Does this mean that humanware Braille displays only perform best with Surface computers, or is it across Microsoft Windows entirety, meaning on manufacturers like Dell, Lenovo, Acer, etc.? Uh, well, this just really applies only to the Design for Surface program. So it's a it's a program that they have accessories on their catalog. So if you was to go and search for a Design for Surface device, it lists also some accessories that work um, work well, work seamlessly with with that particular um, you know, program or computer. So it's really a recommended device that Microsoft recommend because they've tested the product in alignment with their own um, kind of technical technicalities, you know, making sure that it, the drivers are well supported, making sure there's no problems that it's gonna cause. So really it's especially down to the Design for Surface program. And you can actually look a bit more information up about their Design for Surface program uh, and their catalogs on their website. Andrew, this is of course about Surface machines, devices like the Surface Pro, Surface Laptop. It's not about Microsoft Windows in itself, right? I know your products work across Windows. We all know that. But you know, this particular announcement is really about Microsoft certifying that humanware Braille displays are, you know, for their own manufacturers' devices, right? Exactly right, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Windows 11 update has also introduced additional enhancements within their own ecosystem. So Narrator now uh, from Windows 11 does support these new note takers uh, or supports the new Braille displays of the Mantis Q40 and Brilliant BIX. But the Design for Surface program is, it's really, you know, the calibration not only provides the kind of equal access to common tools for people living with visual impairment, but it's really a way of ensuring that the these Braille displays are a great accessory if you have a design for surface device. 
Let's talk about these braille displays. Now, the Humanware name is one that is very well respected around the world and a range of products that are well known and liked. But I want to talk about the range in particular that is designed for Surface. What sets them apart and, and what are they really? We'll start off with the, the Brainiac BIX series and there's two um, braille displays in this series. It's the Brainiac BI 40X and the Brainiac BI 20X. So let's, let's go to the 40X. So the 40X meaning that it's got a 40 cell display and what's unique about this display is it has Bluetooth 5. So when we looked at creating a new Braille display, we wanted to make sure we tackle some of those barriers that people were experiencing from our predecessor displays. And one of the biggest issues was connectivity because fundamentally these displays, they need to connect to multiple different mainstream devices, whether it be a computer or a mobile device. So that was really important in our view. So what we did is we integrated Bluetooth 5 technology to allow better connectivity. So it's gonna be working great f uh, from a further distance, but also a more solid and stable connection utilizing Bluetooth 5. Um, so the Braille displays can connect via Bluetooth uh, up to five devices, and we can also plug in a USB-C and plug into your devices that way as well for your Braille terminal. And of course, use it with all your common screen readers today. So narrator, voiceover, um, and of course, uh, the JAWS and NVIDIA and so on. So the 20X um, is very similar to the 40. It doesn't have Bluetooth 5, however, it does have Bluetooth 4.2. It does have SD card capabilities, USB, onboard storage again. So identical to the, to the 40X, uh, but just in a smaller scale. So it's just in a 20 cell. Uh, really unique uh, device that allows you to connect to libraries on the go and uh, small enough to kind of fit in your kind of suit jacket or, or, a, or a bag. Andrew Flatteris, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, helping clear up some of the things with the announcement and also helping us dive into your Braille displays that are designed for Surface. Thank you for letting me join you, Steve. Okay, Stephen, so that's one side of the story, the humanware side. When we come back from a quick break, it's Microsoft's turn. This is Double Tap TV, back in a moment. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Back on Double Tap TV, Stephen, we've heard from Humanware's perspective, but I think it's important to understand what Designed for Surface really means, and I think we've got the best perspective that there could possibly be. I could not agree more. Jeff Bishop is a product manager at Microsoft. He works on the Narrator team, the screen reader, of course, that is built into Windows, and he joins us now to talk all about Designed for Surface, this new certification. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Tell us about the program, will you? Absolutely. You know, the, the, the service program and for devices is really something that is really driven by the service team itself. And there's a process that they undertake to test the devices and they engaged us because we deal with the, the software part of, of the solution. And so a, as part of Windows, we, we released some pretty major changes for narrator Braille. And as part of that, we work alongside Humanware and actually other vendors as well to ensure that Braille displays would function with our new Braille filter driver capabilities that we shipped in Windows 11. Jeff, can you go into some more detail about this? How are you improving Braille in Narrator itself? And I guess across Windows in general. Yeah, well, you know, Braille's been in Narrator for quite some time. And we use Braille TTY and LibLui as the components to support Braille displays because we wanted to provide the widest range of Braille display support that we could. And so what we did here was we did a couple of things. First of all, we upgraded Braille TTY and LibLui to much newer versions of these components, which brought along with it, of course, support for more Braille displays, of course, like you know, the Mantis and the Chameleon and, and the BI20 and 40X lines and, and many, many more. There's about, oh, 18 or so Braille displays that we added in, the, in that release. And so that was the first part of, the, of this process that we, that we undertook. But really, one of the things that we wanted to solve for, and, and we've gotten lots of calls to the Disability Answer Desk, and we've heard from consumers, and we heard from our OEM partners that 
one of the biggest problems that we had was being able to use a Braille display either with narrator or with a third-party screen reader, such as JAWS or NVDA. And if you turned on narrator Braille support, then third-party support would not work with your Braille display because narrator would take over the device and you know, it, it caused for you know, there to be a, a problem there. So it was a little challenging to, to work around that and it, it, requ it required you know, the disability answer desk to get involved and oftentimes OEMs to get involved. And, and we, we knew this was a problem and we heard a lot about it from, from users and we heard about it from partners. And so we wanted to solve this problem. And I, I will say it was, it was technically, it, it's, it's probably one of the most rewarding things I've done in the past five years here at Microsoft to be able to, to work across teams because it, it required significant effort across our team as well as teams across Microsoft to develop a solution that was going to be able to work and, and make it, dare I say, you know, magical. So Jeff, how exactly does a Braille display work in conjunction with Narrator? We built this thing called a, a Narrator Braille filter driver and basically it, it allows the, the Braille display that when, when you, know, you turn on Narrator, it knows, oh, okay, well Narrator's here, so go use this driver you know, for this plugged in Braille display. And if narrator turns off, then return control of the Braille display to, you know, the third party screen reader or software that was controlling the Braille display. So it, it, it sounds simple in theory, um, but it was, it was one of those, you, you know, opportunities that we had where it really required some very innovative thinking and just some great ingenuity from engineering and, you know, us product managers to come up with a solution. And we couldn't have done it without a team effort. And it empowers Narrator to be great for Braille Display users. Not only that, Stephen, but it empowers the user. Because we know that people use multiple screen readers, you know? We, we, we know for a fact that that happens. So we wanted to make sure that, that whatever device you bring to our platform, that you can use it seamlessly with whatever you want. And that's what we, that, so we you know, worked on really, really hard to solve. Jeff, it would be a shame to have you here and not talk about AI. Artificial intelligence is probably going to make its way into every single episode in this year and more. And, and before you start telling us that you can't tell us this, you can't tell us that, I'm asking you this really from the, the Jeff Bishop, the person perspective, not the Microsoft representative here. How do we approach this from an accessibility point of view? We need to be responsible in the use of AI. The, the community has gone crazy about these 11 labs voices. I'm sure you've played with them, Stephen. Yeah. But the scary thing about them is, you know, that they can be used to generate, you, you know, voice samples of your voice or my voice. And with with great power comes great responsibility. So I, I am just hoping that we, we do something to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from ourselves, I guess is the way to say that. Because I think people could utilize this technology in, in ways that would not be helpful. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. Jeff Bishop from Microsoft, who works there as a product manager on the team that creates the wonderful built-in screen reader called Narrator. Um, these are definitely exciting times and lots of opportunity to grow. Yeah, exciting is definitely an understatement. Uh, Jeff Bishop, thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. You know, so much to digest there. I don't even know where to take it from here. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it might seem small to many, many people, but when you talk about Narrator, Narrator was the screen reader that you used to download other screen readers. You know, I remember seeing a, a joke. Um, <laughs> it was Microsoft Edge, actually, and I don't know if this is a real Twitter account or not, but I saw a fantastic joke on the Microsoft Edge Twitter account, which said... You know, now we are no longer just the browser to download Chrome. Well, that's exactly <laughs> how we talk about Narrator or how we used it. But now it's a real tangible screen reader for many people. Great new features in there. Fantastic new natural voices. Loads of new features. And of course, this Braille display support as well. This is massive because this has been a problem for a lot of people. Despite the fact that Braille displays have been around for a long, long time, the, the, work, the way they work with Windows in particular has always been a bit of a challenge. So thankfully, Microsoft taking that on, uh, taking it on head on actually, and really fixing it so that any Braille display that's connected to a Windows computer going forward will work, you know, 
very well. Yes, there'll still be problems. Look, no one's going to say it's perfect. It's not. There will still be challenges. But you know what? As, as Jeff says, feedback is the most important thing. So we've got to get in touch with them and let them know. Uh, when there are issues so they can resolve them they're listening they, they are and then play your part make sure you get your feedback in if you use those devices they want to hear you and as you can tell from jeff like they they actually do listen so that's a very important part of this agenda making sure that you know systems work and you know this is why beta testing exists Stephen. yeah it's so that people can actually speak up and get their say when something doesn't work so that it can work for the next generation of people who might use it well you know beyond beta right even just general daily use we're very good at criticizing things in this world but we're not very good at praising and you know I, I think praise is good but also feedback is important as well Jeff is very keen to to promote that and of course Windows F on any computer will take you to the feedback hub and you can drop some feedback right there uh, on Windows so really really useful to know about because you can then just feedback directly to Microsoft and in you know narrator's case Jeff will be one of the people who gets that direct feedback well thank you to Jeff thank you to Andrew from Humanware uh, thank you at home for being here uh, we'll catch you on our next episode of Double Tap TV thanks for watching Double Tap send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567 hosted by Marco Flalo in Montreal and Stephen Scott in Glasgow. Producer Marka Flalo. Editing and graphics Jordan Steves. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Social media Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist M. Williams. Supervising producer Michelle Dudas. Manager programming AMI TV Lizanne Gagne. Director content development and production Karen Nye. VP Content Development and Operations, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media, Inc. An AMI original production.